flies. Spring has sprung. There is insects everywhere. It's making doing any recording in the garden here very distracting. Every time I set up for a shot. <laughs> Hi. Hello again. I am Blunty. How are you doing? I've messed up my entire intro there. I'm all out of rhythm now. So yesterday, I put up a video about this beastie right here, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I have to slow down and think about it every time I say that name because it just doesn't roll off the tongue. 11 Pro Max. 11 Pro Max. 11 Pro Max. It just doesn't. I'll get used to it. We'll, we will we'll get used to it eventually, just in time for next year's model to come out with 11 Pro Max Ultra or something. Who knows? But I spent most of that video, in fact, I spent pretty much all of that video talking about this as a production tool for content creators. I wasn't doing a camera review, I wasn't reviewing the phone as a phone or as a pocketable computer or anything. I was just focusing on how much better this makes my life as a content creator and how much more power and flexibility I have. I'm not going to go through it all again. You can watch that video if you're really interested in the full breakdown. Point is, I'm very excited about what this does and its capabilities and its flexibility and its power. And during that video, I mentioned that I've been using iPhones in my YouTube stuff for years now and there was no point in justifying it as a you know you don't have to ju try and justify it anymore as a production tool people make a Hollywood movies all that sort of stuff I talked about and it got me thinking how long have I been using iPhones as a regular integral part of making content and I think it started around the iPhone 6s plus because that was the first one with 1080p if I remember correctly if I don't remember correctly I'm sure you're already correcting me in the comment section but the 6s uh, the 6 and 6s I think had 720p which was okay but by then Pretty much anyone who was serious about video was standardizing on 1080p anyway. But the first iPhone with built-in video functionality was this. And this came out exactly 10 years ago. Well, a little over 10 years ago. This came out in June-ish, I think. And again, correct me down below if I'm wrong. But it's been 10 years between this and this when I was starting to think about how long I've been using iPhone video for. Uh, and I thought, well, let's have a look about how far we've come in 10 years. So that's what this video is. I'm just throwing these head to head and I'm not... You know, this, this is, I'm not just doing this for gimmick's sake, and I'm not just doing it to say, hey, well, you can, it doesn't matter what gear you have, you can still use a 10-year-old phone to make content. I'm not, I'm not arguing that this is a practical tool for today's use. I just want to show you how far we've come in the way the cameras work, in the way they operate, what the priorities of, of, of them working are, the, the technology, and just basically the, the end result between when we were so excited to be playing with this the photos were 3 megapixel, I think. The video wasn't even HD. It was 4x3, standard definition, 640x480, I think. I actually have to double check that. I'm sure it'll be in the video. But this, of course, 4K60 all the way up. You know, we've evolved all the way from here to here in just 10 years. And I think that's worth a look. So, let's take a look. S slight, slight regrets about dropping both iPhones down there because that just went kluk kluk. This is soft plastic. Actually, you know what? For 10 years, this thing's holding up pretty well. Now the iPhone 3GS did not have a front facing camera or a selfie camera as we know them today. So to record yourself doing a vloggy style thing, you just had to kind of hope and pray that you're in shot. I mean, there were certain things you could do to sort of judge the angle at which you had the phone, but basically whether you were reflected in the back versus the reflection on the curve of the, there was all sorts of little tricks I used to use to try and get it done. The point is I never did it much because it was such a pain in the ass and the framing's not particularly good. And of course, not even dealing with the widescreen and all those kind of issues. It wasn't a particularly practical camera for doing this stuff back in the day. I had far better options. And again, this video really isn't about the practicality 
of using an iPhone 3GS in the context of today's content. I just wanted to take a peek at how far we've come in a mere 10 years. And I think you can admit, we've come a damn long way, including, by the way, the microphones, because I will now switch to the iPhone 3GS microphone so you can hear what that sounds like. We've got a bit of noise, we've got wind and birds squawking and sort of city noise coming from over there with various machinery and stuff going on and I think there's a there's a, there's a ride on mower going over there somewhere so So there you go, a nice sort of graphic and direct comparison about how far we've evolved in smartphone cameras over the last 10 years. We've come a long way, baby. And I have had each and every generation of the iPhones as we go along, so I've been playing with the evolution as we go, and it's one of the reasons why every time a new phone comes out, I'm more excited about the camera than anything else, because that's, you know, it's what I do. So what do you guys reckon? What did you think? I think I'd still be happy with some of the photos out of this. They're fairly high contrast, but, you know, I kind of like that sometimes. I don't know whether I'll shoot a project with this just for gimmick's sake or maybe I'll do it for the 4S I think was the first one was 720. I've still got my 6S Plus there somewhere I think as well. What do you reckon? Should we keep doing videos like this compared to various generations? I don't know. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and we'll catch you next time. Flies. Just flies. Bugs. <laughs>